Nous allons passer euh, à, aux autres présentations. Julie Laurent Ledoux, un legal manager, Philippe Collin, who is in charge of innovation support, and Jérôme Delacroix, uh, project manager working in compliance. So we're not talking about technical development anymore, although we'll get back to this, but we're starting with these aspects. We are going to talk about the other important part of the Frogan's project. If we talked about Frogan's site, let's not forget about Frogan's addresses. So, Julie, you will tell us what we mean by opening the FCR to Internet users. Thank you, Jean-Emmanuel. Good evening. So, I will talk about opening up the FCR to Internet users, but I would like to talk about the FCR itself. So, just a reminder of what I'm going to address in this presentation. Alexi already uh, said a bit in his presentation earlier. So, what's the FCR? FCR stands for Frogan's Core Registry. And You'll see that I'll be using the acronym FCR, sometimes I'll say registry, it's the same thing. So let's define it. The FCR is a database in which all Frogan's addresses and networks registered worldwide are stored. So this database that collects all these addresses allows registering these addresses in more than 170 languages. In order to know what's in this database, and this database will become huge at one stage, we've implemented two different services. The first one is the WIS qu query system, because if you are familiar with domain names, the WIS database works the same way as other WIS spaces on the web. In this database, this is where you find contact information for Frogan's addresses, uh, right holders, their name, uh, first name, post address, technical information, date of creation of the Frogan's address, and other type of information which will allow you contacting the right holders of a Frogan's address or of a Frogan's network. For instance, if you have a problem because the person who registered the Frogan's address, well, you feel that this registration is damaging your rights, or because this person is publishing a Frogan's site and you think that the content on this Frogan's side creates is damaging your intellectual or property rights for pictures music videos etc well thanks to this um, service you can know who is behind the frogan's address then the second service developed by op3ft and which is very important this is the downloading of public data and that's very important This is a service that's going to make it possible for anyone because uh, I forgot to say, but Wiz is a free service, free of charge, available online. And the public data service or department allows you downloading the list of all Frogan's address, addresses which are registered in the database. So in order to ensure protection of privacy, You don't get the individual data of the creators, the designers, but you can dis you can download the entire list of Frogan's addresses and networks, and you can also download the list of what we call FCR account administrators. That's another jargon I'm going to explain later. So the FCR account administrator is the intermediary 
that's going to enable uh, Frogan's address holder to register his or her address, for instance, if you're interested in registering Frogan's asterisk Julie, you can't because it's mine. So, either you, you need an open an administrator account or talk to an SCR account administrator so that you can register this address in the database. And what you really need to understand is that we have we've de we have deployed a Frogan's address registration and management interface so that SCR account administrators can manage on behalf of Frogan's addresses holders so that they can manage the registration of Frogan's address at the moment but in the future they will be managing the cancellation of addresses, transfer of addresses and many other functions. So this interface which is available, is a multi-partite interface that we call multi-stakeholder interface, MSI, because many parties can use the space. And this is what's going to happen when we start spreading the Frogan's technology. We'll make this platform open to other users than FCR administrators. Okay, skipping this. But this FCR, this Frogan's core registry, is the property of OP3FT. But like what happens with domain names where ICANN is the authority and delegates the operation of registries to commercial entities, OP3FT has delegated the uh, technical and commercial operation of this registry, this database, of, to what we call the FCR operator. That's the legal entity in charge of operating the database. And at the moment, it's SDG Interactive. So what do we mean by technical and commercial operation of the FCR? Well, technical is what I described just be before, because the real operation of the WIS service and public data service is deployed for free, free of charge, by the operator. That's part of the contract we signed with them. That's part of their job. They need to put online, seamlessly, they need to put this um, WIS and public data services online and available online, and they need to make it possible for account administrators to register Frogan's addresses, and they also need to manage Frogan's addresses. Okay, another important thing is that the SCR operator is, and that's the second part of the contract that we talked about, there is commercial operation and technical operation, and it's the role of the operator to resolve disputes in terms of Frogan's addresses and to, to resolve Frogan's addresses. That's also very important, and I'll come back to this. But I'm moving on because Alexi talked about this earlier, so I won't spend too much time on what's on this slide. Just a reminder of what occurred in the history of FCR. Between 2001 and 2005, we had the first Frogan's addresses being registered. A certain number of people registered addresses until 2005. In 2014, we initiated a program that we called Early FCR Account Administrator. So this is when we asked, or we offered a certain number of companies the possibility of testing the interface I was talking about, you know, the management and 
registration interface for Frogan's addresses and we had three companies that volunteered and we continue working with us, with them. And they opened an administrator's account. They started registering addresses and testing the interface to help us improve it and to help us add new functionalities, etc., etc. So, as of 2014, we actually worked with them to improve our interface and they tested all functionalities that we implemented right from the beginning and which kept on evolving as the project moved forward. Then, we can start talking about opening up of the FCR. When it's not yet open to internet users, but we did open the FCR in 2015 when between April and June we had this priority registration period and this priority registration period was targeting brand holders. So those who hold rights to brands had a possibility to register their brands as network names like Amazon for instance they registered Amazon Asterix and they did that during this priority period. After which we opened a second priority registration period for entrepreneurs. It is still ongoing. And during that period, we called on entrepreneurs who wanted to embark in technology before the technology was made available to create foreground sites. People who had ideas, like I will register a Fergan's address under Fergan's because I want to do it, make it available to the general public once available. These people could and still can, and you still can, all of you, register a Fergan's dedicated network, the part to the left of the star. For example, Golf Star. And you can also register in a second phase during this period in a public, public Forgans addresses. We start with a Forgans name, Forgans Star, followed by your site name, or the transcription of the Sogans name in the 10 linguistic categories we described in the FSCR specification so that we can write in over 179 languages. Right now, this period is still ongoing and registrations take place regularly. The following phase that started at FTC 7 in June 2000. Seven, we launched a test of resolutions of Forgan's addresses in 2016, that is, testing public Forgan's addresses. So the holders of addresses starting with Forgan Star or its transcription in different languages could start to put their sites online during the test period using, as Damia and his colleague said earlier, well, you have to use the developer version of Forgan's player, so it's not yet for the general public. But you can start to test the sites online since June 2016, which was a major breakthrough for everyone who, who planned to publish a site, since they could test it out. What do we find in the FCR database? We have 25 dedicated Forgans networks today and 622 Forgans addresses, public addresses. So out of the 622, some were registered from 2001 to 2005. That's why it's important to recall that. And they're still registered in FCR and some of them. I have a special procedure for confirmation that is still ongoing. Today, what's new and what are we working on today 
with FCR and the registration and management interface for FCR. The interface I spoke of enables account administrators to provide services, and it exists with certain features. And every day we're working on this with the specifications team on it as well, working on adding features. The two main features that will be added very soon are the transfers of holders, enabling holders of a Forgans address to transfer its address to a new holder, and also retrieving by a new FCR account administrator, retrieving the registrations of a holder, meaning that each holder can change F the FCR account administrator whenever they wish. The other thing that's new today for FCR is the rollout of the second phase of FNS servers worldwide, which is now under review with Level 3 communications, as Alex said before. One of the biggest players in the world for setting up servers and IP connections. The FCR operator has a partnership with Level 3 Communications, and that has been the case for several years. And as a result, if I'm not mistaken, six FNS servers were set up. One FNS server in Paris, one in Frankfurt, two for Europe, two in New York, and two in Los Angeles. So six FNS servers today. We're now reviewing the deployment of new FNS surveys worldwide, in Asia in particular. So that's what is new for FCR. I would now like to turn to the switch to the spread of Forgans technology and what we'll be offering you in the coming months. What's very important as for the interface I spoke of earlier, the management and registration interface for account managers, it is now available via an HTML interface. Now, thanks to SDKs that FCR administrators will provide in the main languages, Java, PHP, C Sharp, and Node.js, FCR account administrators can provide services, and that will be ready in the coming months, in the coming weeks even, for some languages. The other important point, stemming from opening up FCR to Internet users and the switch, switching to the spread, is the possibility for all users, Amazon Star typically, to start to, to register Frogan's addresses and to publish Frogan's sites associated with the Frogan's address in their network. Another important point, and here you'll better understand why I spoke about a multi-stakeholder interface. I'm referring to UDIPF arbitration centers. Remember the small green points, four green points in Asia and one in the U.S. These arbitration centers will be able to use the FCR API to manage disputes regarding Forgan's languages and addresses via this interface directly. Another important point for all current holders of dedicated Forgans addresses or public addresses is that alongside the data to be open to Internet users, that is the start of the registration period. If you registered the address in February 2016, Forgans Star Julie, I registered that address for one year. That one-year period will start, will become effective 
the day that FCR is open to Internet users. I know the starting day of my registration, the 12th of February, but not when it ends, because it's a one-year period that begins only when you open FCR to Internet users. That is important for people who want to register today. If you choose a one, two, or three-year period, you can choose up to 10 years, it will start only as of when we can publish your site. Another very important part, and I stop at that, is that once FCI is open to Internet users, all address resolutions will be secure via electronic signatures. It's a promise we made since the start of the project. We are developing a secure technology, and one security aspect is with signatures for resol address resolutions, which will be set up with the rollout of Forgan's technology. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for telling us more about the Forgan's core registry. I can see hands being raised. The topic is the FCR Central Registry. So, Benjamin in charge of technical specifications. Thank you for your presentation. Just, I have one small question. You spoke about Label 3, the company that provides um, FNS servers. Will we still remain with the same provider, Level 3, or change? giving us more guarantees if there were a problem with Level 3. Well, the second phase of deployment of NS servers is under review, so I can't answer that question, since we are still examining how to deploy these other FNS servers. It may be possible, I'm turning to Alexi, in the absolute it is possible, but Level 3 is a company. Uh, Level 3 Communications, that is, is a company. That is one of the two biggest players on the market, operating in most countries around the world. By having two servers in each zone, that gives them redundancy. They're not in the same data center or the same zone. We have already thought of uh, that aspect, but imagine that we could call in another operator. Well, let me just point out one thing. The first deployment phases were done with Level 3, based on the partnership. We have a representative from Level 3 here, so I'd better behave in the room. So the first deployment with Level 3 is one thing. We're organizing the second phase in the same way. Level 3, we know that the entire network of FNS servers will have to be managed on several internet zones, ASs, for redundant services, regardless of the situation. No one has yet had any overall problems with Level 3, but the global operator well, clearly will have to roll out without any risk. Level 3 does not operate in some countries, and some countries need to work with local operators, like in China or Russia. So anyway, these other operators will come in gradually.